What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another Euro 2020 fantasy video. We really are at the business end now. This is team selection ahead of the semi-finals. So only three matches left. Obviously two in the semis and the final. And only four teams left in it. And yes, one of them is England. I am happy. Had a few beers yesterday. Feeling good today though. Semi-finalist for the second major tournament running is pretty good. And I know the routes have been fairly easy compared to what it could have been. But if you've watched England in the past, you know how many times they mess it up. So it's going to be good. We're going to be focusing on all four teams. I'm going to talk about how I did in the last round for the quarterfinals, how I'm shaping up for the semifinals. And obviously, we've got five transfers to make as well. So lots of moves to be made, talking about capsies, all that good stuff. If you like it, give it a like. If you're new around here, hit subscribe. Let's talk about the quarterfinals. So day one was awful, and I didn't have too many players for day two. So overall, it was a pretty poor week, I would say, or poor match day. Um, 50 points altogether for, for the quarterfinals, 328 points overall, which dropped me from like 2,600 to 6,800, so not fantastic. And to be honest, it's going to be pretty difficult to go up the ranks from here. I'm a little bit annoyed at myself because I talked about the hit for Harry Maguire, and obviously got a clean sheet, and he scored his Harry Maguire, he's my man, and I'm I'm, dis I'm disappointed in myself for the way that I've played this game some weeks. Um, but it is what it is. I went for Sarabia instead of Farron Torres, which meant I didn't need the hit. So I saved myself four points. But I would have been up, and I would have had Harry Maguire on my team. I would have gone even more mad than I did. So a little bit frustrating. Um, but look, I, who was I to know, or how did anyone know, that Sarabia and Morata would have gone off as early as they did? So that was super frustrating. They only got one point. Damsgaard only got one as well. De Bruyne got two, got knocked out. In Insigne was the only real thing that was great from um, the first day because obviously he was scored a bit of a wonder goal. And the players I did have for day two were pretty good, right? Mailer got another five points, Stones got six, and Kane was my captain. I switched obviously from Sarabia um, to Kane, and Kane scoring two goals was huge. So he kind of saved me a little bit. Um, but obviously, it's going to be harder and harder to make up ground now because there's less teams and less players to choose from. But we do have five transfers. I pretty much know what I'm doing already. So let's talk about that. Okay, so things aren't looking too bad because I've got five free transfers, obviously, like everybody has. Um, but also, all the favorites pretty much went through. So England, Denmark, Italy, and Spain all went through, which is what I was expecting. And unlike the previous round where that didn't necessarily happen, it did this time. So that was good because I had four Italy players, only one better. Belgium in De Bruyne um, and obviously I had a you know brought a few England players in Spanish players etc so we're looking quite good although we do have a few problems so first of all we've got four players on the bench that are all still eliminated so De Bruyne has just gone out Stecklenburg, Kimpembe and Dumfries were already out I didn't want to take a hit in the last round I still don't really want to take a hit but I'm not completely against it. And the reason for that is, obviously, those four players on the bench are super easy to change. But I also have a couple of problems in my main squad. So, Berardi didn't start. I don't really see any reason why he'll start the next one. I think Chiesa will. Uh, and I already knew that in the last round. But I gave him the benefit of the doubt. He came on. And he got that yellow card for standing too close to a free kick. Absolute madness. Um, Sarabia might not play. Apparently, he's injured. I can't find, I googled it before I came on, I was going to say came on air, but you know what I mean, before I came and recorded this, and there's a few people on Twitter saying that he is probably missing out, and they've linked a few sources, but I don't know if that's 100%, but in the back of my mind, I know that he's probably not going to be available, and we know that Spinazzola's out as well, right, he's going to be out for months, really, real big shame, because he's been so good, one of the players of the tournament, I would say, so now there's him to deal with as well, so if we look at definite issues, there's four of them. And then Sarabia, Spinazzola, and Brady. Look, I can count. That's seven. I've only got five free transfers. So what I will probably do is still not worry about Brady. Right, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt that he'll come off the bench and hopefully do something. And because i got five transfers and I'm going to fix a lot of the other issues, I will have some subs. I only had one sub last week or last, you know what I mean, last match day. Um, and I think because I've got Simon, I, I don't really see... A goalkeeper necessary with a definite clean sheet apart from maybe Pickford. Um, but I don't think it's going to be worth using a goalkeeper transfer. I'm probably just going to keep some on and hope that he gets something against Italy. But obviously, we've, there's only four teams now. So we're going to have a lot of players from all these teams. It's going to be very difficult to get points from all of them. So if I don't get points from Simon, hopefully I've got some from Insigne, from Berardi, from Immobile, or whoever it might be, right, for Italy. So I think my transfers have to be... Kimpembe, De Bruyne, Dumfries, they're all eliminated. Then Spinazzola, because he's been such a big part of all our teams. We know he's not going to play. 
And then if I don't get any better news for Sarabia, he's probably going to be the one that goes as well. Because although Berardi's not going to start, and neither will Sarabia probably, at least Berardi will almost certainly come off the bench. So I think that has to be my five free transfers. Kimpembe, De Bruyne, Dumfries, Spinazzola, and Sarabia. Now, I'm going to back England. Right? I won't lie. I'm... Um, I'm drunk on England football right now. Uh, I wish I had had more players and had the balls to go for it in the last round. Uh, I didn't. Really good result against Ukraine. Denmark is going to be much tougher, right? Make no doubt about that. Ukraine, in the end, was fairly easy. England played well, I thought. Um, they controlled the game at times. The only real times Ukraine got in was mostly England mistakes, right? Kyle Walker made a couple. Um, so nothing to take away from Ukraine, but Denmark is going to be more difficult. But even against um, Czech Republic in their last game, they I don't know, they started off really well, and I thought it would be super easy for them. And look... They didn't get troubled a huge amount of times, but I thought towards the end of the game they looked like a bit tired, maybe. Maybe that's just lazy, I don't know, maybe that's lazy punditry, but I don't know. They weren't as comfortable as I thought they might be. And I think England are going to be a bigger challenge than the Czech Republic was. So it's going to be an interesting game. So I think, coming on to my transfers, it's going to, I mean, De Bruyne being out means there's a lot of money to spend, right? So De Bruyne to Sterling is almost certainly on, uh, and you can have six players now from one team. I would like to go for a punt on Jaden Sancho, but there's no guarantee he starts the next game. And I think that England, I mean, England, the team I know the most about, which is why I'm talking about them a lot, right? Um, but obviously they went 3-4-3 against Germany. Now, Denmark also play a back five, but I don't 100% know if we're going to go 3-4-3. We could stick to a 4-2-3-1, 4-3-3 um, kind of hybrid formation where Mount is playing as a 10, but he does get back quite a lot. Um, and they might go for someone a bit more defensive on the right, like Saka, for example, if he's if he's back from his knock. It might not be Sancho again. There's no guarantee Grealish starts. I think people are still holding out hope for that. I just don't see. Sterling is just not going to get knocked off that left spot, and rightly so. Um, so Sterling's the obvious one because we know he's going to start. If I knew Sancho was starting, I probably would take the punt. Um, so if we find out before the deadline, I might make that move. So De Bruyne to Sterling. I think Spinazzola, I'm going to stick with Italy. So he will probably go to Emerson, who's almost certainly going to play on that left side. Could go for Bonucci, to be absolutely sure. I just think, why not go for something a bit different? So maybe Di Lorenzo, but probably um, probably Emerson. And then two more English players for Kimpembe and Dumfries. That'll be Maguire and Shaw. And look, on the deadline stream, people were asking me about Shaw. And I kept saying, I'm not 100% convinced he's like 100 and what 10% or whatever nailed on. I was like, he's probably like 90, 95% nailed on. And how good was he? So I think England defence is looking good. And I could go Pickford, but I feel like having the out outfield players is better instead. So Kimpembe, De Bruyne, De Vries, to Maguire, Shaw, and... Um, Sterling, that'd be three of my England players. Spinazzola will go to Emerson, probably. Something a little bit different. And then I've got Sarabia. I've got to be honest, he's probably going to go to another Spanish player, like Ferran Torres. We will know the Spain team before the deadline, so I'll keep an eye out for that. The reason I'm going to go for a Spanish player is just to keep the balance right. So... No matter what happens, I'm not going to get completely screwed for the final, right? I've got three Spanish players, Morata, Sarabia, Simon. If they get through, I'll have Farron Torres probably. We'll see who starts. It could be Olmo. I'll wait and see. I'm not really that bothered about who it is. I'll have three players. So if Italy get knocked out, okay, I lose four, but I've got three Spanish players. And if England get knocked out, then I've still got two Danish players. So I've got five, then I've got another five subs to make. Okay, that'll only bring me up to... Um, 10, but maybe I can take a hit if I want to, right? Or on the flip side, if England go through, well, I've got five players from there already, and if Spain go through, that's eight, I've got another five transfers, etc., right? So at this stage of the tournament, I'm not really worried about going all in on one team, and I just want to back England, right? I'm having fun in this Euros, I'm backing Gareth Southgate, and... For those five players, Stones, Maguire, Shaw, Sterling and Kane, we can be pretty sure they're definitely going to start this game and the next one if they're all fit. I don't know if we can say the same necessarily about, like, you know, Alba, for example, at the back. Great great player for Spain. Really attacking. Should have had a goal in the last round. That was a mistake not to give that. Give, got given as an own goal. Crazy. Obviously, I tweeted that I was happy about it, but I was joking. Um... But could Gaia start? Possibly. Will it be Olmo? Will it be Sarabia? Will it be Morata? Probably. Will it be Moreno? It's just hard to tell. And with Italy, I've already got four, and I don't really know who I'd um, change. I may take a hit. I may change Berardi to Chiesa if we know that he's going to start as well. That's something I'm considering doing because you get him right from the start. And if he plays well again and Italy go through, then he's going to probably start the final as well. 
So you might be worth a hit. But that's the moves. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do some tinker in a set. But just to confirm once again, Spinazzola, Sarabia to Emerson and Torres. And then De Bruyne to Sterling, Kimpembe and Dumfries to Shaw and Maguire. I, I'm not really considering anyone else. Denmark players possibly, but from Denmark it would be another defender and I'd rather just back England because I think they're the favourites to go through and I don't, I obviously don't want to move any of my forwards because they're all going to play in Mobley, Kane and Morata so it's only midfield and again Damsgaard, Insigne, Sterling you know whoever starts from Spain which we will know they're going to start that's looking pretty good for me so it's, it's pretty straightforward it's a bit boring I'm sure a lot of people are thinking that way but sometimes boring is good let me know what you think in the comments below. Let's just do a little bit of tinkering to show you how that works. Okay, so this part won't be too much different, but just let's make sure that uh, all the transfers work. And by the way, for some reason, the screen won't pull from the website. So I've had to put it over the bar at the top. I mean, I just, this website, get, let's get back to FPL. It would be better, much better. Um, so Sarabia, and I haven't talked about captains either. I'll do that in just a second. So Sarabia, Spinazzola, and then the three outfield players would probably be the ones that go. I don't know if a hit is worth it for the goalkeeper. But I feel like it probably isn't. So Sterling, sure, look at all these players at the top of the list because England are just pretty good. Um, they're okay. England are okay. It's okay to say that, all right? I know we haven't had the hardest run, but we're doing all right. Um, and then probably Emerson. I haven't even checked his price, 5.5. So that gives me 0.5 million to spend, which means I can't actually afford Berardi to Insigne. Uh, let me, let's let's just do some on-camera while I'm live working out. Uh, sorry, not not Insigne, Chiesa. So he's 7.2. So I'd have to find 0.4 million. So potentially, Torres down to Olmo is an option if Olmo starts. Again, this is all ifs. Um, there isn't really anyone I would shop, uh, swap Shaw for because I just don't think Walker is attacking enough at all. Um, and obviously Trippier, we just don't even know if he's going to start because we, we won't know if it's a back five. So I don't think there's any actual changes I would make to this. The only thing is, I either leave Brady in or I just spend 6.8 million. But... If you think about midfields with 6.8 million, like for Spain, it's Sarabia, who I'm already taking out anyway. Koke, who's just not really a great option, plus he's 7.4. Um, Olmo is also, also out of the question. Pedri is just not attacking, really. Brilliant player. Only 18. Madness. I don't think he's missed barely a minute so far. Uh, and obviously Busquets is no, no good either. The only other option really would be Denmark. But I think um, most of their midfielders, apart from Damsgaard, are just no good. Really? I mean, Delaney, to be fair, did score a header and he did have another chance, but I don't think that's a sign of things to come at all. And Hoiberg just not attacking either. So I think realistically it's Brady, or if Olmo starts, then I do Ol uh, Torres to Olmo and take the hit to get Chiesa that way. But I will wait for the Spain lineup and just go from there. I just not really... I don't, I don't know, sometimes I get like... Um, I don't know, just not, not narrow-minded. We Like... Tunnel vision, right? Tunnel vision is the word I'm looking for, where you're just hooked on a player and you don't think about anyone else. But I just don't see who else I could get right now. Like, I'm not, a, my team is not in such a luxury position that I want to start moving strikers around. And even if I did, who would I go for? It's a Danish striker instead of one of the three, uh, the main strikers from the other three sides. It's just not worth it. So it kind of picks itself. Let's talk about captaincy. So again, you're only going to get two days. You're getting a Spanish player, an Italian player for the first day, and then England or Denmark. My England captain will be Kane. Um, I just think he is... I mean, he scored three goals now in the last two games. Uh, look, we can talk about form or whatever. I never questioned Kane. Like, there was... I know it was just a minority, but it was genuinely some people saying that he should be taken out of the side, which is absolutely mental. But I just think... For me, I, I kind of want to go for an attacker. It could be Luke Shaw again. Um, or even Mailer, to be honest. But I want to go for an attacker. So it'll probably be Kane or Sterling. Probably Kane again. Um, and then on the first day, this is really tricky. Uh, the thing with this game is, and the reason why I'd be put off going for a defender, it's knockout. So um, obviously England have kept a, a bunch of clean sheets. But if Denmark have got to go for it at the end, or if England have got to go for it at the end, the, the chance of a goal I think is quite high. Plus, if it goes to extra time, defenders are almost at a disadvantage because they've got to go another 30 minutes without conceding to get the clean sheet. So I definitely want to go for an attacker. The first... So England, for sure. It's going to be Kane or Sterling, probably Kane. Um, the first day is much trickier, Italy versus Spain, because... I could go Morata, but I think Italy's defence has been pretty good. But for Italy, their attackers, like Immobile and Insigne, don't really strive with too much confidence. Although Insigne 
did score an absolute belter. So I probably will go for one of those two, right? Let's just say Brady's in for now. It'll probably be Insigne or Immobile. Maybe Ferran Torres, maybe Morata. I have, I did favour going for a midfielder in the last round uh, for the quarterfinals in the first game, and I might do that again. So Insigne or Torres, if Torres starts, or Olmo, right? Uh, but the thing with Insigne is his minutes are pretty much guaranteed. Like if Italy are chasing, he's very unlikely to be um, subbed off. Uh, it's only really when the game's maybe wrapped up or they're looking to hold a lead or whatever it might be. Whereas I think with Torres and Olmo, etc., like we've seen how many changes Enrique is prepared to make. Like the game wasn't even necessarily won, and then Morata's coming off, Sarabia is coming off. Um, so I think I probably will go for an Italian. And Mobley has been subbed off as well. So I think it might be Insigne. I might go Insigne. Uh, and then definitely Kane or Sterling. But that's it. I don't think there's any other transfers to make. I think the team is pretty much locked in. I've just got a hope with one, two, three, four, five England players that it comes home. But that is it for this one. As always, give it a like if you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. Stick around, right? If you've had a bad quarterfinals, I know it gets a bit tougher. But there are five transfers to make. So you never know. You could get back into it or at least increase that rank a bit. Uh, over for the semi-finals and for the final as well because you get another five transfers ahead of the final so make sure you stick around i'll be doing another video before the final let me know in the comments below what you think of this team otherwise hit that like button hit that subscribe button tomorrow i will have more of a kind of game week preview a match day preview answer some questions talk about capsi or whatever um, you decide to ask me on twitter um, but i thought i'd get team selection out first so thank you for watching hit that like button hit subscribe and i'll see you again soon